Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is Mazuma Kenneth once again, and I want to appreciate the good Lord for this wonderful opportunity that he has given unto us to continue doing the work of the ministry together and for all that he has done in our lives as far as his daily providence that has been realized and experienced in our lives. I also want to thank him so much for each and every one of you who are listening and all of you that have taken the initiative of uh, cross-examining scriptures and everything that has been communicated on different forums. Well, today we are discussing something that is to do with the danger of elevating ministers. The danger of elevating ministers. Now, one of the things that uh, is very common and popular in our time is the issue that is to do with the elevation of uh, the so-called ministers, where ministers are actually above uh, correction, they are above actually reproof, they are, they are above actually any form of uh, what you might say, you bringing them into accountability for whatever thing that they may have done as far as the border crisis is concerned. One of the things that we should care so much about is that one is made a minister of another, one is not made a minister for himself. If someone says that he's a minister, we need to know that there are so many masters that people in one or the other will submit unto. Those that submit to Christ, they are to learn from Christ how to add minister, how to minister to others. But what is very common today, there are many people that have come in the name of Jesus Christ, but how they carry out ministry, it's so much to do with actually that ministry being so much centered on themselves, it being so much centered on their own desires, on their own desired goals, and actually a number of things to do with what we call self-promotion. So there is a fronting of them so much than you hearing what is known as the fronting of the gospel of Christ. Paul made it very clear for every one of us that say that we are ministers. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 1, he said something that is very radical that needs to be paid attention to. He said that uh, let a man so count of us as ministers. Now, the word minister that you and I need to pay close attention on to. It actually means a servant, a someone who is a subordinate. As far as the New Testament is concerned, these are officers, these are tenants, these are people that execute uh, actually a particular responsibility. So if, if someone is, is actually a servant, that means that person in one or the other in the context of what we are talking about, he should be a preacher of the gospel. In other words, he should be one that aids others in a work. He should be the one that shows others what they are supposed to be doing. So Paul says of ministers of Christ. So our ministerialship should be actually rooting from Christ. That means that we are representing Christ. We are the ambassadors of Christ. We are actually people that go out to represent Christ to the rest of the world and to the rest of the people that are not yet believers. The Bible says, and stewards, we are not only ministers, we are not only servants of Christ, but we are also called stewards. A steward is actually a person that manages the affairs of another person. A steward is actually a pretendant, one that in one or the other that has been given a responsibility to oversee the activities of another done in the right way. That is one thing that the Bible makes so very much clear to us. It says that stewards of the mysteries of God. Now, a person forgets to know some of the things that are to be considered or some of the things that qualify a person to be a minister of Christ is why today, instead of us having people who are stewards of God's mysteries, we have people that have been elevated to a place where the person they are supposed to be serving has been diminished and it is them that are in the position where Christ is supposed to be. And what is very popular, 
the moment you get the minister into the place of Christ, you no longer have the gospel. You have the gospel according to that minister, not the gospel according to Christ. The moment you put Christ in his place and you elevate him and he's central in the message, the minister will not be anywhere seen. The minister will remain in his place of being, the one that dispenses the truth of Christ to the rest of the body. But the moment we see them as CEOs, the moment we see them as EDs, the moment we see them as actually some sort of bosses of a particular caliber that are supposed to be served by us than they serving us, is one of the reasons as to why we cannot miss the general manipulation that has taken its course in the general board of Christ. Talk about whichever continent that you might want to refer to. The Bible says as stewards something which is very important for us to do what? To consider. Ministers of Christ, they put Christ as number one. That is why in 1 Corinthians 3, 5 says that, who then is Paul? The moment you lift up a minister and you put him in a place where he's not supposed to be, the glory and the honor, the worship and the reverence you have for Christ, it's going to be given to that individual. That is why they are able to actually have their statements. That is why we have elevated them above that which is written. Because we see them being of unequal authority with the word of Christ. That their word is not in one or the other checked. It is not in one or the other examined. It is believed on a surface value without any person digging into the words of that individual. Whether they add or subtract from the original word of the master. Paul said to the Corinthians, who is Paul and who is Apollos? But ministers, check on that, but ministers, meaning that they are in a place where they are to execute commands of another. They put into actions the commands of another. Instead of having people putting into action the commands of Christ, the teaching of Christ, theirs, their own instructions have become the general norm. Their teachings have become the staple doctrines for people to follow. So, that's why a person can wake up the next day and says that I dreamt about this. I believe the Lord was telling me about this. That is why a person can wake up the next day and he says, God told me to do this and this, that you guys have to follow this and this. And checking the scripture, it's not anywhere close in alignment with what is biblical, with what is canonical. So ministers are called to execute the commands of another. The commands of their master. They are supposed to attend to the instruction of them. In other words, if we are in a position of calling ourselves servants of Christ, we teach the teaching of Christ. We don't add, we don't subtract. We don't exercise actually an hypocritical attack on the scripture. Pretending to love the word of God, but actually diluting it, but actually adding and subtracting from it. We are just like a waiter who serves another person food. We are just like a waiter that, that waits for a command from a client. But today, the ones that are supposed to be ministers of others, they are the ones that are in one or the other who have put themselves in a place where they give instructions and the instructions they are giving, they are based on their own feelings, their instruction based on the promotion of them. No wonder most of the ministries today, they are, they are actually under the names of the person saying that is a senior pastor there. I address my ministry, Kayanja ministry, Andrew Mark ministry, so and so ministry, Joseph Prince ministry, all of that. It means someone is actually on the top of it all. Someone is in charge. You cannot question a person who actually on his letterhead, there is his name. He will ask you whether you were there when you were starting. All of those things show us that it's very difficult to call that individual into accountability. Paul says, who is that Apollos? Are we not ministers by whom you believed? Even as the Lord gave to every man, ministers are to give what, what the Lord has given unto us in the scripture. They are to share it. Remember, the pastor is supposed to aim at preaching the scripture until he dies. But today, instead of the pastor preaching, 
the scripture until the day he dies, the pastor is actually adding and subtracting from God's word. The pastor is copying a number of novel doctrines and those novel doctrines which are based on actually him raising and uh, fundraising from people is one thing today that has become staple is one thing that has become the norm and those that love to have their ears tickled they don't care about a person trying to add on to the scripture they are after an individual who will tell them what suits their conscience paul says in first corinthians chapter 9 verse 16 for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, for necessity is laid on me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. The ones that we have as ministers, they do not have a word of woe in their mouth. Cast a I to elevate myself. Cast a I to allow people to lift me to a place where today people are submitting to an individual, kissing his feet and doing whatever he says should be done. He says woe well, unto me. Because our business is to share the scripture. Our business is to minister to people what has been given, not to add, not to try to redefine. He says woe well, unto me. For if I do this thing willingly, a true minister that he will not be elevated is a person that should do the ministerial work willingly. Not because he's waiting for a particular payment. But the ones that you pay, they are the ones that you've elevated. It's the money that you've given unto them that has made them celebrity ministers that you idolize, that you go on actually wanting to covet their lifestyle, not knowing that the people that you call ministers, they have their own what agenda. Paul said that that is not me. He said that uh, willingly I have a reward, but if I go against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. 18. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power. There is a particular level of power that has been given to ministers, and that power is none other than that which has been given to us to do what? To execute the commands of another, and that command of another is none other than Christ. No one should stop us from preaching. But the challenge is, if no one has stopped us from preaching, we go wrong by not preaching the one that told us to share his word, and then we formulate and actually begin to build our own empires. And the Bible says... One thing that Paul still made so very much clearly in Matthew 24 verses 45. Who then is a faithful and a wise servant whom his Lord has made a ruler over the household to give them meat in due season? Why we are calling this the danger of elevating ministers is simply because people are elevating a person who does not give them food in due season. People are elevating a minister that is not faithful. A minister who is faithful to the Lord is a minister that starts by not in one way that redefining what has already been given. A minister who is faithful is a minister who is contented with the revelation that has already been given. The one who does not claim new revelation, the one who does not claim the apostolic authority, the one who does not go above that which is written. The Bible adds in to say something that is very important for you and I to consider. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5, Paul said, For we preach not ourselves. The ones that people are elevating, instead of going to Christ and elevate Christ and his gospel, they are actually elevating themselves. Paul said that we preach not ourselves. There is a tendency, all of the ministers that have been elevated, they have never in one or the other preached Christ, they preach about themselves, how they are putting on a million shilling suit, how they are actually having mansions, how they have gone to this nation, they have gone to the other nation, how they have a dollar and a shilling account, and all of that nonsense. Paul says, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. There is no way 
how you see yourself as a servant of Christ and then you see yourself in the line of what you're teaching. Everything that you see in the line of your teaching will all be about Christ. Very important things to consider. 2 Corinthians 6 4. He says, But in all things, approving ourselves as ministers of God, who are they that are ministers of God? in so much patience, in affliction, in necessity, in distress. The danger of elevating those ministers is them not even be able to preach about issues to do with what? Patience, affliction, necessities, and distress. The ones that have been elevated, no wonder, they know not about patience. They know not about affliction. They know not about necessities. They know not about distresses. Why? They preach against all of this. That is why they say, you can command whatever you want to say happen there and then. That is why they say they are king's kids. There is no affliction the moment you get in Christ. That is why they say, how can you be in Christ and you lack? But Paul says, but in all the things, approving ourselves as ministers of God in necessity in much necessities, in distress. Check out the people you are calling ministers. Check out their lifestyle. Whoever has been elevated will not talk about the biblical patience. We will not talk about afflictions, that as we serve the Lord, we can still be afflicted. They will dodge that. Check out what do they say about necessities. They cannot talk about issues to do with oppression. They cannot talk about issues to do with distresses. Paul says, these are things that you should do mark. And I've started with things that qualify a minister, and then I'll end with things that disqualify a minister. In 2 Corinthians 11, 23 says, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more and in, in labors. Paul says, Those that you call ministers, and to all of you who are listening, the people that you are calling ministers, they are living in five-star hotels. <laughs> <laughs> they are having cars of actually uh, millions and millions of shillings. Those are non true ministers. You've elevated, since you've elevated them, they have been able to receive all of those indulgences from you. He says, Are they ministers? I am more. I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, in more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons, more frequent in death. Now, what is very common today, it is the people that they are supposed to serve who are what? In much trips, who are actually in a frequent death because of the situation that they are going through. Where is this in the modern day church today? The Bible says something that is very important in Colossians 1.25. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Their main interest those that are true ministers is to say it the way it is. And these are some of the things you should look out for. The moment you see the things I've shown you that actually define a true minister, not actually being seen in the lives of those that you call your ministers, just know that those people you've elevated them, and why you elevated them, they were not talking about Christ, they were talking about themselves, and Christ has been diminished in the lives of those people, and Christ has been diminished in the congregation where those people actually come from. First Timothy 3, 6. It also adds in something that is very important, but one thing I want to do here, is to show you something that is of a peculiar manner that you and I should pay close attention to. When you look at uh, Matthew chapter 23, beginning with verses 1, the scripture says, Then spoke Jesus unto the multitude and to his disciples. Now let us look at the audience. Jesus didn't only speak to the multitude, but he also spoke to his disciples. And in this context, I want you to understand, if you call yourself a Christian, you're on the side of those that are disciples. Verses 2, saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, they in one or the other give them soft respect that was not given unto them. Verse 3, O therefore, whatsoever they bid you, observe. The Lord says, false as they can be, Obey what they tell you as long as it is a true thing. Do what they tell you to do. The Bible doesn't say that observe and do, but do not 
you after their works, for they say and do not. If what they are telling you is true, please do it. If what they are telling you is not true, don't do it. These are people who tell others, if it means to borrow, they should borrow for the Lord. If it means to give all of their money, they should give it and remain with only transport. How much have they given? And if they are giving, they should not give in the same place where we are all giving. They should give more extensively to the people, in the least in those congregations of theirs, people who do not have anything. Because if they are giving in the same basket you are giving, still it goes back to them. They should look out for people in the congregation who are actually in their situation, who need assistance and look out for them. So what they tell others to do, they don't do. The Lord says, what they tell you to do, if it is the right thing, you do it. But the problem with them is what they say they never do. Go preach the gospel, evangelize, but they do not evangelize the, in their tinted cars. Go and, and visit hospitals, they don't visit hospitals. Go to the prison, for them they don't go. That is the era of actually where a minister has been elevated to a level of a CEO, executive director, and all of that. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and lay them on many shoulders. And they themselves will not move them with one of their finger. What they tell others is an utter impossibility to them. They themselves cannot even move one of their small fingers. Why? They have been elevated that the ones that have been told to do those burdensome things, they cannot question the one telling them. Why? Because they see him as a hero. They see him actually as a person that is untouchable, they see him as a person that is of a greater pedigree that no one should question him. That is a sign of an individual that has been elevated. Verses 5. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. If they do something, they will actually want the general public to do what? To know. They are hypocrites in, gen in general. So it doesn't say they make broad of their phylacteries and enlarge the, the borders of their garments. Now today what is very common is their accomplishments. They have the radio stations, they have the TV, they have the schools, they have all of that. Those are now their clothings. When you look onto that, it sums up who they are. So everything about an elevated minister, it is actually a showman's business. It's all about fronting him, fronting his ideas, fronting actually all things that are to do with building his domain. Bible says in the book of, uh, if we may also consider, Matthew chapter 20 and uh, verses uh, 24. The Lord Jesus teaches us something uh, that we can also pay close attention to. It says in verses 24, And when the ten heard it, in fact let me begin with verses 20, 23, verses 20, Then came unto him the mother of Zabedee's children, with her sons, worshipping him and desiring a certain thing of him. Verses 21, and he said unto, he, unto her, What will you? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons sit the one on your right and the other on the left in your kingdom. 22. And Jesus answered and said, You know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. 23. And he said unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup, and be baptized with my baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given unto them for whom it is prepared of my father. Now, whatever that is to do with the apostles sharing in the baptism of Christ, it is of course very true. They died as martyrs, they were killed in actually in a painful way. But when it comes to a person sitting on the right and the left, Jesus said that the Father knows a person that will actually have that place. 24. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called them unto him and he said, Know ye not that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion. An elevated minister, a minister that has been put in a place where he is not supposed to be, 
the Bible says one thing that is very common, they behave themselves like the heathen kings. They exercise dominion over people who are under them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. That is one thing that we have seen, that uh, you need to fear the wrath of your pastor, the wrath of your minister. Whatever he says goes, you are not, the, you are not supposed to question anything that that person says. Everything he says, you say yes. Like as if he is a boss that can fire you anytime you do not do a particular assignment. The Bible says there is a kind of leadership that the Lord never wants or in one way or other. He does not want any of us who say that we are his servants. Instead of ministering to others to behave ourselves as the princes of the Gentiles who exercise dominion over the people, over their subordinates. 26. But it shall not be so among you. What the Lord said that should not be so among us is what is very common today because people have left their place of ministering to others to a place of being ministered to. Are you following? The Bible has in to say something very important for you and I to consider. It shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. These are verses that are lying silent in the scriptures without them being tampered with. Because they contradict the general norm. Whosoever will be a chief among you, let him be your servant. That means that we look back to all of those things that Paul the Apostle actually mentioned that are to do with patience, that are to do with affliction, that are to do with actually being central on the message of Christ alone other than elevating the words of an individual, other than elevating a man. The Bible says something here that we should also pay close attention to. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That is why even when they see the wolves coming to tear up the shepherd of the Lord, they silently look away as if nothing happened. With all the controversies in the body of Christ today, the so-called men of God that have been around for 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 years, they are silent, enjoying the luxury, the opulent life that they have gathered from lying to people by not them being watchmen over what was given unto them. It's a very bad thing. And that is why here in the book of uh, Acts, the Bible makes it very clear in chapter 12 and uh, verses 21. I want us to consider something here. It says here in Acts 12, 21, And upon a seat day, Herod arrayed a royal apparel and sat upon his throne and made an oration. Remember, an oration is the same thing as a public speech. And to them, 22, And the people gave a shout, saying, This is the voice of God. Look at that. When has it come to this level that the one that is supposed to minister to others says something and they, try, they, they, they equate his voice to the voice of God? That is why today we have many that are above correction. We have many that cannot be called into accountability because of the common slang, touch not the anointed one of the Lord and the many things to do with their experiential ideology. If you don't have as many people as I have, please, you have nothing to say. If you are not wealthy as I am, please don't say anything to me. If you do not have these physical things uh, as far as the material wealth, you have nothing to say to me. What I am telling you, that this thing that happened with Herod, to a level of people saying it is the voice of God, not a man, is very common today with the likes of the T.B. Joshua's with the like of all of these false ministers of our time, that they are given more reverence than that that is actually supposed to be given to them. People have more respect for them than the teaching of the word of God. The Roman Catholic Pope, if he says something, more reverence is given unto him than the soundness of the scripture. These ministers that have burnt candles on people's heads, people respect them more than sound doctrine. These ministers that have made others eat grass, people have more respect for them than what the Bible teaches. These people that have made others to drink 
jig and other substances that are not good for human body they have been given more reverence than what is in the scripture the ones that have much days the gospel buying higher private jets and all over these expensive cars people have given them more reverence than what they are they are supposed to give unto the scriptures herod when he spoke there was a people said that the voice of this man is the voice of a god not of a man every time you begin elevate a minister on a position that is not supposed to be on to what you are basically promoting what you are building into him is for him to take advantage of you is for him to manipulate you and what the psychophants don't know these lousy followers what they don't know that it is you who give these ministers the power to rob from you it is you who give these ministers the right and the power of manipulating you and lying to you the bushilis the alpha lookouts the ubat angels and all of those the more you begin to see them as gods no wonder they believe in teachings that are known as little god's doctrine they see themselves to be of actually they claim deity they see themselves as supernatural beings you cannot miss them taking advantage of you and the bible says something in verses 23 and immediately the angel of the lord smote him because he gave not god glory what is awaiting all of those that you have actually elevated that have given false prophecies year in and year out and you don't bring them into accountability and you do not mark them and avoid them one thing that is awaiting for them they are going to be radically judged by god herod was smote by an angel and he was magnetized there and then that was a, he gave not god the glory every time you diminish christ and you elevate those guys you are not glorifying god the minister is not glorifying god and the people themselves are not glorifying god that is to mean ezekiel 14 10 comes to pass the judgment of a false minister is the same judgment that comes upon they that seek a false minister the Bible says and he was eaten by worms and gave up the ghost the patience of the lord means repentance second peter 3 8 and 9 but god's patience in one way has been taken as some sort of slackness as if he is not able to accomplish where we were esteeming the omnipotence of god that is one thing that is no longer seen as one of the attributes of god what will he do and that is why there is a lot of ministers in one way that are taking advantage of the people having a lot of things to do with fornication and things to do with actually us having many of the apostles of prosperity in the church us having preachers of mammon in the church and no one calls them into accountability whatever they have made a standard to show that one is being used of god the bible says something completely different the abraham they keep on quoting that he was very rich we see in the story of lazarus and a, uh, a natural and a rich man abraham they are talking about never comforted the one that was rich with the physical things he comforted the one that was rich in faith these guys that have been elevated the danger in it is that their end is the end of all of those that actually seek after them what are you doing there when your minister is talking about the number of planes the number of cars he has what are you still doing there and what are you doing there when your minister fronts money and numbers verses 24 and the word of the lord grew and multiplied the word of the lord cannot grow and it cannot be multiplied where there is an elevation of a minister where a minister is put in a wrong chair where a minister is put in a wrong position where a minister is never rebuked for teaching wrong things where a minister is on on top of it all and no one actually can actually say something to him the bible says in acts chapter 14 one other thing i want to show that comes as a result of elevating ministers in chapter 14 verses uh if we may consider verses 14 14 14 it says this if i may begin with verses uh verses 8 and there sat a certain man in lystra important in his feet being crippled from his mother's womb never had walked nine the same had paul speak and steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed he said with a loud voice stand upright on your feet 
and he leaped and walked. Verse 11. When the people saw what Paul had done, there are those who are not actually cross-examining, who are not like the Berenians in Acts in Act 17, 11. They are only waiting for something that tickles their ears and then they do what their actually wrong thoughts have always been waiting to put into practice. When the people, now people have been in one way or the other all along that have been listening to sound doctrine in one way or the other. There is no miracle, there is no any sign that will make people forget uh, the importance of putting sound doctrine first. In this place, because these people were worshippers of wrong things, the Bible says when people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices. Now, these were heathen believers. These were, I, I, in one way I would say, these were people that were not worshippers of a true God. Now, what is very common with us today, people who say that they are believers, they behave like these people that were worshippers of the false gods, in the term that Paul and Barnabas preached in Lystra. They are waiting for an opportunity. They are actually in a club, they're in that social club which they are calling a church, where they have their man of God that they have put in a particular pedestal. They, they have elevated him above all others. That even when the scripture says, it is him that is on top of the interpretation of the scripture. His version is what should be acceptable. The Bible says they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in likeness of men. When you hear Christian Colome say that we are not human, you understand the spirit that chooses him. Someone who says that we are not humans, is an individual who has failed to see the reason as to why the apostles did ministry the way they did it. Actually, those are statements of the Lyconians, statements of those who actually have a belief in actually some gods other than the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that they have visited us in likeness of men. And majority of the church folks, these guys that they have elevated, they see them as their little gods who have manifested in likeness of men. That is why those guys, those people can do whatever they want to the so-called believers. Verses 12. And they called Barnabas Jupiter, one of the planets, and they called uh, Paul Maturus, one of the planets, because he was the chief speaker. Verses 13. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was before them, even their priest was there, which was before their city, brought oxen and galads unto the gates. And they would have done sacrifice with the people, verses 14, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul had of, they rent their clothes. The Bible says they rent their clothes, which is the same thing to mean they began to tear down their clothing. And they did it in indignation with deep, with actually what is known as deep grief. Today what made the apostles rent their clothes is one thing that makes the ministers that have been elevated to continue to puff up themselves, to continue to hype up themselves, and reign in among the people crying out. Instead of the ministers that seek to be elevated, Stop the people from those actions of uh, the Iconians. They say nothing about it. They keep quiet about it and all of that. In 15, and saying, Sirs, why do the things we are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn? I have heard ministers today who say lousy statements after people idolizing them that I didn't know what people were going to do. I didn't know that people had prepared to do that. From the very start, one thing that should be questioned, what were you feeding them? And if they did it without your notice, why don't you rebuke them there and then? Paul and Barnabas didn't know what these people were to do. But the Bible says they shared with them saying, we preach to you there and then to turn away from these vanities, to turn away from these devoid things, from these useless things from things of no purpose from things that are actually rid of truth so whosoever is your idol i want to reassure you if those ministers there are things that have been done to them and they have never said anything against they have never said anything in opposition to whosoever seconds to whosoever spearheads the things that they have done to them 
just know those people they are already in a place of elevation just know that congregation itself it is actually behind the, the activity or the practice and just know that that congregation and the minister they cannot miss to be judged of God. There is a danger to it. See what happened to Herod. There is a danger to it. That is why Paul and Barnabas could not allow. They ran away and said, guys, turn away from that. We know you are heathens. You are non-believers. Yes. But we are here to preach to you to live such behaviors. If Paul and Barnabas in one way they are compromised by saying the Lord would understand that these were heathens, these were unbelievers, they didn't know what they were doing. Paul and Barnabas knew the danger that would happen to them. They said we preach to you to turn away from those vanities and to the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that there be in. Today the are the the Christ embassies, I hear Apostle Suleiman, I hear these ones in Uganda, in Ghana and all over, they say nothing. All of those in South Africa, they say nothing. They continuously want to be elevated. And the, the people in their congregations, even if they are warned, they say, if you are saying we are brainwashed, we desire to be brainwashed. Those are vanities. You've already, in the few minutes, I want to communicate this. If a minister is known to be elevated, do not give him the power and authority that the scripture does not ascribe to him. That is to you, the congregants. Be Berenian, study the scriptures, and know what should be ascribed to a person and what shouldn't be ascribed to a person. You ministers, if you do not want to be elevated, do what Paul said, preach Christ alone and him crucified. Make your gospel to be central unto Christ. Remember the words of Christ that the great among others is the one that is a servant of another. Study the words of the Lord. Study the lifestyle of the apostles. You will not allow to be elevated and you will actually rebuke whoever will try to come up with that ideology. The congregants, your role is to study scriptures, be Berenians. And make sure in one or the other, one thing that I have made very firmly, do not ascribe particular reverence, a particular authority and power that the scripture does not ascribe to a minister. Because on two sides, there is something that will not go well with that. So, Paul said no. You see what happened to Herod. If God can judge an unbeliever, for accepting that worship to be given what will happen that is why the bible makes it very clear in first peter 4 17 that judgment has to start in the house of the lord if the church folks know things that they are supposed to bring or to call out and they keep quiet about it and the worldly people are the ones calling out what the church should call out therefore for that time is come that judgment must begin at the house of god if it first begins at us what shall be the end of them that obey not god god cannot judge those that obey him not and us who say that we obey him we do the loudest thing that is going to judge them for let us use our brains and go back to what is written and if the righteous are scarcely saved, what, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? I cannot go beyond this, but what I can say, stop elevating ministers. And stop you allowing people to begin to see you as their idol. It should be stopped from the likes of the Kenneth Copelands, the Joe Austins, the Joyce Myers, the Roy Thompsons, Jerry Seville, and all of those word of faith preachers that people have copped, the Stephen Fatics, and all of that crew to do the Todd Whites, and all the prophets there, and the ones that are claiming to be prophets, and yet they are non prophets. Let us go back to the scripture. We need to remain humble and remain consistently faithful to God the mysteries of God without addition or subtraction. And on that point I want to say, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to understand, don't ever think again that we are humans. I want you to understand the graduation of revelation. I want you to understand at a certain period, at a certain period, the apostles thought they were humans. They said so. They thought so. When they tried to stop others from almost worshipping them. They said, look, we're, we're humans like you. No. That's where they were wrong. Their spirit was right. 
but their answer was wrong. Their humility was right, but their answer was wrong. They were supposed to say to them, don't worship us. This is the message we have brought to you, that you also have the potentials to become gods if you believe in Jesus.